things for ourselves. The winner of the lower bracket finals, the King Slayers, RSG Philippines. Up next, we have the King of Kings, Zang Raja, RR2 Hoshi of Indonesia. dominant force in the tournament. Will they be able to claim the throne of MSC? Talking about Clint versus Beatrix here. I gotta say, you need a little bit more time on the Clint because that power spike comes a lot sooner for this Beatrix, especially when we see that early BOD come out, mm -hmm. already running that weapon mastery, usually the emblem. That is already gonna be a big threat here. So what does RSG Philippines want to round this out here? They've got a couple seconds and it's gonna go ahead and be the Kufra. Ooh, okay. I was thinking maybe they want to go for Natalia, but I think Kufra is a lot safer considering that, I mean, the last time we saw this come out of light, again, not exactly the best in RQ or ready, but now that he's fresh, I think this is going to be a good game. It's a very high risk, high reward hero here in this game. And as the first game of the series in a best of seven, I think this is the time to go for these crazy picks, look for the momentum and look for that confidence here. That's the number one thing. You need to build up confidence right off as we start. But taking a look once again at the draft here for you, Naisu, because for me, I actually prefer Araki Hoshi's draft. Let's see what you think. Well, I mean, you know what I'm gonna say here, man. RSG Philippines, this is comfort, it looks good. The question is light on this Kufra. We've seen it, right? Make a little bit of mistakes, but hopefully he's figured it out for this game number one. All right, I don't know. See the aggression that he wants to put oh, oh, oh. forward. He does not get it. A risky play here at the start of it all. As RSG try to look for the punish, they will be able to lock him down, and that's for as soon as possible. Now, it's Lord time. Oh, Light actually going in for the Tyrant's Rage. Doesn't connect onto anyone here. Might be punished. Gets jumped low. Oh. Alfred looking for the heavy spin, baiting out that flicker from Light, but in the mid lane, Nats gets caught out. Phantom execution now as Demon Kite looks for compensation. Alfred dodging away, and Mon with a Demon Hero's Passion will not be able to find anyone. Skyler picks up a double, converts it onto mid turret, and this might be a free lord for RRQ. Okay, so see, this is what we were talking about in the draft, right? Light takes the Kufra, unfortunately makes a bad call, gets out of position, and RRQ is going to punish him for that, and that's also just most likely going to be a free lord for them as well. So this is already RRQ just punishing, you know, the new guys right now. Let's see if they can take it down. Nats going in for the falling side. Nice. Albert uses this to just punish him down. It missed some strike, and that's going to be Skyler who picks up the kill. They're looking to convert onto more objectives here. Top side, the passives are all taken down. They don't even need minions to take that. They're a moment to actually turn things around. Enhanced Lord in the mid lane. RRQ marching here as they're looking for something. Dawning light to defend as that real world innovation comes in. Oh. Ivan gets chain CC'd, forced to flicker out. Nats in the back line trying to deal the damage. Skyler will be able to flicker out, but Nats finds him in that back line. It's gonna be Albert trying to zone them away, looking for the defense. Clay onto the base. He's just hitting on it. The base hasn't fallen. R7 Ooh. loses his immortality. And RSG, they punish this. R7 taken down. A two for one. And RSG come out on top. Demon Kite will choose to see RSG Philippines letting this one go, right? Even though they need to defend their base, Aqua will most likely be there. Has that dawning light, like you mentioned, plus those items available. And now Lord are going to be at half health. Oh, Albert looks for the pick here. Goes in for heavy spin. Will be able to pin light down. And that's going to be Skyler picking up the kill. The Athena has been dropped. Now with the dawning light coming through. And Mon is gonna come through with a dash. R7 flickering out. Clay just Lord. getting zoned away by Nats here. Doing so much in that back line. 1v4. Albert looking for oh. Retribution. Will fall as the Retribution comes down. And Mon is huge. Is massive. He 
he takes down two before his immortality pops. And it's gonna be Skylar looking for compensation. He dodges away, pops the flicker, and the quote unquote Omega timer that they are doing here. Let's see, real world manipulation being put down from the side of RQ. Finn taken low, will have to back up here. That's gonna be light, light. looking for something. Doesn't get anyone here. Forced to pop the Man. bouncing ball. Wild charge was connected there, but it's gonna be Albert bringing Nats back all the way. Finn taken down, but it's gonna be Nats who gets traded back. That's the immortality pop. He's still able to run away. He gets out and or he had the flicker, but again, no right opportunity. Here we go. Albert pops that heavy spin, oh, taken oh. down instantaneously. That's going to be everyone looking for the base, but RSD gets zoned out by the real world inflation. And Mon has the Wesker out. He's looking for something here as Light pops in the Tyrant's Rage. We'll be able to Light. get the Tyrant's Revenge. He flickers out of there and he gets the trade. That's our seven trade for no one as the Dawning Light comes through and takes up the kill. Killing spree for Aqua. He is massive and isn't up yet, so they have the numbers advantage. Let's see if RQ can test this. I don't think they can here. Look at the Dawning Light there. He's able to take play off here. That's going to be Vin opening up the map. Going to get punished there as he looks for an opening, but will not be able to find it. RSGPH, they turn the tides of the map. What are we seeing there? What are we seeing there? Oh, a malefic roar coming in from Skylar once again. Actually, the win of nature here. So he actually opted to sell, I forgot, either Berserker's Fury or the Wind Talker there for a defensive item. Skylar actually going to be able to get out oh. of that Tyrant's Revenge of the Flicker. Very aware to get out of that, but now with no Flicker, that's a huge resource. That's what we're going to play. Going in for the Falling Sound Moon. Gets bursted down to half HP. It is an Esmeralda. Very, very tanky. Still can run away. Light charging in for the Tyrant's Revenge. Doesn't connect it onto anyone, oh. particularly only Finn. Now, real world manipulation. Looking for re-engage onto Aqua. Light's going to be isolated here. The Dawning Light connects onto three members. It is going to be Light. The rest Whoa. is still getting out. Demon Kai looking for the trade. Finn survives with one HP. Oh my goodness. Or RQ, they defend and RSG are forced to back off again. They do win the trade though. This is crazy, right? This is now, I mean, both Ooh. bases exposed here, but what team has our RQ? RSG have their number right now. And even the die round, R7 is forced to stay up top. They're just instantly going at it, committing onto this Lord. It's already taken down to a quarter of its health as Nats does his thing. He just zones away all the members. Dawning Light once again, go. connecting onto three. Oh. Albert looking for the steal right now. Finn jumps in with that wild charge. Demon Kite gets it. RSG, they collapse once more. Albert caught low there with the winner's run. Just still able to run away. Demon Kai gonna get taken low, but no! Oh! Demon finds it, just gets it there. The Dawn no! Light finds it. Demon with the triple kill. Oh, to Skyler. He is showing revenge. He dodges away from Clay, and Clay cannot defend alone. This is huge. RSGPH completely abusing the savior, maintaining the enlightened oh. form, and they find one more, a monster kill. Aqua, low key, now taking it high key. The King Slayers with game number one to end it off here. It was one turn, one team fight that dictated this match. Aqua and Emon both just popping off there at the end. Very patient and disciplined. Again, both teams could have been anybody's game, but the Kingslayers grabbed this game number one. Huge confidence booster here. Huge confidence booster. They're making sure that they set the tone for the rest of this best of seven. This is a position that we've seen many times before for both of these teams. It's not going to be a clean sweep and expect to go the full distance. What a match, honestly, right? It's. It's an amazing first game. It just yeah. sets the tempo for everything here. RRQ, dominant in the early game, and RSG. We kind of foreshadowed this a little bit by saying that they learn from their mistakes, from their opponents. This is Omega's draft. This yeah. is the Omega timer as well. We mentioned it 18 minutes in was when it was turned around. And now I think it's time to go to the analysts, throw it over there, as they will have a lot of say about game number one here. And RC Philippines is going to lock in the Lolita here. Oh. So these guys are quite tanky. And this is going to be hard to get through that defense of RC Philippines because uh, it's going to work so well. Even you're talking about the Xavier plus the Lolita and just to negate a lot of that incoming damage from RRQ. Uh, I mean, negate is one way of putting it. I feel like it's more for the disengage more than anything else. It is uh, not exactly too easy here, especially for RR and especially for RSG. My bad. 
it's that when they are looking for these bigger engages, there's just a lot of options and tools that RQ have to just say no. Ruby, for an example, simple way, a lot of taunts, a lot of ways to make sure that Masha isn't going to be as effective or even Lolita. I'm looking at the composition so far and I just really like RSG right now because, okay, yes, RRQ, I agree with you. They have a lot to play with, but it's all going to come down to that early game. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to step into the land of dawn for game number two. Let's see if RRQ can equalize or RSG can... Wondering though, too, is in these early objectives, if they have enough here at RC, oh, they initiate. Oh, first blood there for RSG. Again, Vin, a little bit too aggressive there. RSG, where they go, allowing for the lane dominant heroes like Skylar playing this Brody to try and win this early game against Iman. Let's see the first turtle fight here. It is going to be RRQ looking for more. Nats going to the back line. That's going to be Albert winning on the Retribution battle. R7 pinning Demon Kai down as the real world manipulation comes in. Demon Kai taken low, going to be taken down there by R7 as Albert will look to Kai away. The Dawning Light is <gasps> not enough. Even with Nat's damage to top it off. Have battle spells, right? And I think, oh, here we go, a fight. Oh, R7 still able to find that heavy spin onto Aqua, even with the flicker pop. And that's going to be light falling as well. Albert with a double kill, 2-0. This is what you want to see from RRQ. Using that early aggressiveness to just look for fights. And R7 roaming so early on is just such a curveball to RRQ. He's going utility once again on the eve. And that's why they're so confident in these fights around these objectives. Well, let's see. Nat is going to be first here on to the river, joining up with his team, but he might be all alone. Vin going to be able to chain CC him with R7. Nats popping in that sprint, trying to look for that back line, and Skylar will be able to kite back. RRQ doing really well here at the front to back composition. They look for the turtle once again. Nats down to 2 HP, but look at Light. This is a, is a very good position for him to look for that Numenon Blast. And flanks. Albert no. gets the kill. Numenon Blast not popped. It will oh. find no one as Skylar jumps in. That's going to be the kill speed picked up. RRQ looking to collapse further as Light. Oh. Will be caught out. The Mystic Field buys a little bit more time, but Albert even going to be the same. This is crazy though, right? Because the gold lead already at this point is pretty massive for RQ. And that's again why they're going to be able to go ahead and start up this Lord early on. We'll see if they actually commit to it because every member is now going to be this top side of the map. Nine minutes in, the Lord now chunked to half HP. RRQ looking for the play. R7 jumping in onto Demon Kai, falling back once again. RSG Light looking for the Luminon Blast. Oh, there he no. Three, the collapse is here, and boom! There you have it. Skyler trying to run away with the torn apart memory as the heavy spin will be able to just stop everyone. Albert looking for the play onto the Lord, but he's going to get bursted down by Iman. They look for more right here, but it's going to be a two for one for RSG. No, the viewer's passion is there, able to chunk R7 low. Skyler can't deal more damage. Albert, Albert. jumping in onto four, but he's going to get caught out of the Mystic Field, he will still be able to get out. The Dawning Light comes through, doesn't connect, but RRQ losing out in that for space, right? They need to get those turrets down, open up the map for themselves, and this oh. they could be looking for a play here. Oh, Nats is so aggressive. Demon Cut getting the death of this welcome, just going to be spitting him out oh. to the team. And Mon right there, Numenon Blast has zoned them away, and Skylar will not be able to take no. out the damage. Vin what? still able to flicker out of there. That's going to be the re-engage from RRQ. Demon Kite falls, and RRQ, they're starting to read him, but Mon, oh my goodness, Skylar as well, getting out from that. Nats now going in once again, looking for re-engage as Light jumps in as well with the follow-up. Albert dishing on so much damage on the Nats, but that's going to be the Mystic Field. Albert caught low, oh! will be shut down. Darning Light connecting onto two, and it is a one for one. Enough damage to pull those kind of Beatrix maneuvers that we're oh. used to seeing. And this could be trouble for RRQ. I'm just surprised because, oh, wait, the play's coming up. Mon's in trouble. Oh, and Mon's gonna get locked down there. Oh. He will fall. Skylar takes the kill. The bottom side, though, look at what Nats was able to do. Let's get those damage items this time around. It's not the same build he played in game number one, and that could turn the tides for them as they get to this point. He has to be able to match that damage that is gonna be pumped out from Aqua, too. Like we talked about with the Xavier, especially late game. Now, Lord, Going to be bobbed and weaved around here for now. Which team decides to go in? Half HP on the Lord. This time around, it is going to be the luminous one, enhanced one, as RSG look to, to find more control here. R7 looking for the heavy spin, going at it. They're going to go oh. for it. That's going to be Albert with the retribution. Clay going to get taken down, though. That's going to be the Numenon Blast popped and used from Light to catch Finn off. He is going to fall two for zero right now. They're looking to collapse for more. Skyler will not be able to run away. He goes in for one more dash. And insane maneuvers from both of the teams. Albert gets out with one HP, but will fall to Aqua. R7 gets out, the Lord traded in for three kills. I Waves, 
This could be a setup, though. They don't know they're there. Oh, Four no blast spin. Still able to cancel it oh! out. The Imad's going to get oh! back all the way that I'm offended. And the read from RRQ as they look for more here. Light forced to back away. And the timing. Look at the timing as to when they check that push. That's so perfect. Wow. Did that... they know they were there? Was that a check? <laughs> That's the was thing. That a, was that a 200 IQ play? I that was a 5,000 <laughs> IQ play. <laughs> How do they know? How do they know? They, I know they sent members here, but they could have easily, like, I know they have buff timers, but the next fight's already beginning. Yeah, Vin with I'm Offended, gonna be able to catch Demon Kite there, but now RSG, they look for something new, and I'm blasting oh! the front's gonna be cancelled again by Vin. R7 looking for the re-engage right now, as he will be immobilized by the Mystic Field. Albert's still on it, they need to look for the commitment onto the Lord right now. R7 Seven. with a heavy spin, zoning Demon Kite away. This is a free Lord take, and Albert will be able to take it. Nap time to the back line, Skyler's still taking low here, going to be able to kite away, as Clay is is just popping, staying, committing onto that real-world manipulation, RRQ. Well, how much, and especially since the sub emblems do give them a little bit of benefit, you can tell that they're making sure that Aqua isn't going to be as effective as he was in the previous game. Let's see, when they siege down the base here with the Brody, I think it's gonna be really good, but RSG Philippines, they're doing a really good job at zoning away, using Iman and Aqua's damage, channeling it together, just as burst down the Enhanced Lord. Now taken down, RRQ will look to find more creative ways to take the base turret down. R7 is still down below, Skylar's trying to just siege it down with the basic attacks, Yep, you will be able to take it down there in the bottom side. Top side also taken low, so oh. they're poking their power spikes. This is where they start to just turn these fights. RRQ though, they notice that Eman is up top. They just fully commit onto the Lord. I feel like they just position oh. themselves a little bit too risky here. And Light will be read out by R7. He goes into the bush knowing Light is there. It is just going to be the Lord taking a half HP. They just try to bring it out. They're trying to just bait it out here as RSG are going to look for more map control, especially here in the bottom side river both teams not pulling the trigger just yet rsg getting caught out here as vin will be able to open up the map once again demon kai going for the dead uh -oh. welcome time vin is gonna get caught he spits him out with the damage coming through but r7 is gonna be able to buy so much time vin getting out r7 taken low there in the top side forced to flicker out clay is gonna get caught no oh! no one two three rrq they can't go anywhere the real world manipulation was popped there but instantly cancelled by clay and now rrq they lose r7 albert is still half hp but they cannot look for anything here. Look at Albert. He just goes for the purple buff. It's RSG with a clean fight and a free Lord. Oh, the one angle that RRQ didn't think of. They were doing the exact same thing. They're trying to delay, but the oh. top side, the minions are pushing into the crystal and Aqua here to stay and defend the base. The hero, the low-key hero that RSG needs as the rest of the team trying to take this Lord as fast as possible. Yeah, it's gonna be Lord taken down. R7 looking for the pin, but the Numenon Blast once again by Light gonna be canceled. Let us or seven flickers there and cancels it away. RRQ Hoshi still getting out on this fight, but at what cost? They shred he is trying to demean RSG as much as possible when it comes down to RSG trying to run away from fights specifically. Well, that's gonna be the Evolved Lord marching down a month somehow finding that spot to hit Skylar in the midst of it all, and that's going to be the top side turret taken down. RSG Philippines just chaining this all across RRQ's base. Mid lane turret inner taken down. They're looking for more on the board, but no, they just pull back RRQ with a good defense. RSG with very good discipline, able to just control this. Still holding on to that 3,000 gold lead, which is just going to get bigger and bigger as we progress through the A little bit longer than he should, but he's also taking killing spree instead of weapon master, so he's not gonna hit as hard as he would like to at this stage of the game. That's again though, look at his positioning. He's looking <laughs> to just find Clay, find Skylar on the flanks, and he does exactly that. He pops oh. the sprint. No, he doesn't pop the sprint just yet. He He's knows. going in, he knows where Clay is. Clay's gonna get zoned out. Our seven's looking for an opening here onto the Lord, looking for that heavy spin once again. Light taken to half HP. Nats. Immobility there as that's going to the dawning light once again. Nats finding Clay, but he will not Nats. be able to run this time. It's actually gonna be Finn looking for the cover. Gets the I'm offended on Demon Kai taking the Lord low. It's gonna be RQ to look for the Lord. Heavy spin gonna be popped. Demon kind so on point of retribution. Nat taken low there in the bottom side. And that's oh. Skylar shutting him down. But Clay <laughs> will fall to the dawning light of Aqua. And that's another one. R7 as well. They find the Mr. Field onto Finn. Finn can no longer run. The winner, trudged by Albert, was missed. Click. And Finn will have his 
Immortality Pop, not just yet though, he mobs like a forward, gets tied no. off, the taunting line to take him down, Albert jumping on a three member, still able to back off, Vin gets hit, but they will both survive with the Evolved Lord, this is looking like a closeout for RSG. Oh, they're looking to end this game, the inhibitor is going to fall down first, and RSG PH so close to getting this game too, they find one and they're looking to pick for more. Albert dealing the damage onto line, Iman jumping in with the rescue, That's just it. dealing it out without minions, RSG goes in off 2-2-0. Two, two, Again, they buy time to get to the, exactly where they need to, find those mistakes coming out from RRQ, and they punish them, taking game two in similar fashion. Yeah, they hit hard, they hit fast, and even though RRQ had a really good idea utilizing the death timer from the immortality itself to ensure deaths of Nats, well done, but RSG, after that, the instinct to say press forward, have confidence, we got this game in the bag. I feel like they were outdrafted <laughs> in game number two. Again, I, I mean, I wrote down GG, I slid it over to you, <laughs> Gideon, as I saw the drafts. RSG complete, a lot of win conditions there, and again, this time I feel like it was easier for them to stall out, to for stall sure. and yeah. wait for that timer. Beatrix Xavier, so huge once again. Dude, Nafs didn't work there. Nafs. Yeah, that last team fight, he just Sheesh. went to the back lane and oh. just made a huge play. Yeah, it's just ridiculous here, but let's go into a deeper dive with the Anasis, the two L's that make this W work all together to give us the inside scoop on the inner workings of this team composition. Take it away, analysts. Both of these teams for RSG, they might want to limit the jungler heroes for Albert. Julian still up for grabs and that Lancelot as well. Yeah. Lancelot. Personally, I think I, I don't think Lancelot may not necessarily be a good man. Julian, however, is much better because again, it's what will cancel out the Eve and what can threaten the gold lane at this stage, right? And I think the RQ, it's very clear cut Thorns what they're gonna go man. for, but RGBH, they take out there. the Lancelot first. All right, we don't want anybody to threaten our back line. And that does give me an idea that Arshi's maybe considering carried uh carry within this game, arguably even Irithel as well. Huh. Okay, they take out the Angela here, right? They do want to also make sure that they force light where they want to. But already from last game, we saw that even if it's a Lolita, right? Something that he typically isn't usually going to pick up, let's say, it works. So that's the thing about light, right? He has quite a bit of a hero pool that he's been showing throughout the tournament here, and it could work out for them. So at this point, RSG Philippines is going to go ahead and focus on those roamers for RQ. They take out the Grok here. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting here. The Grok band out. And again, I feel like they're just trying to take out these tanky, tanky members that can look for these crazy picks in the early stage of the game. But this still leaves out a lot for Vin, right? He still has that Ruby pick. We've seen it time and time again. We know that he can still play an Atlas here or even a Kufra back in MPL ID. So far, yes, we haven't seen it in MSC, but I think now it's time for RRQ to go for the bands onto the Roamers. Light has just been phenomenal in this tournament so far in the series as well. We've just seen him shine. And, and there you have it, the Lolita is going to get banned out. And this is actually such a good answer towards the Xavier Beatrix. Uh, so very understandable as to why they banned it. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. That shield can block so much damage. And I think that RSG at this point of time, now what do they go for? Gold lane still up, up in the air. Uh, they're not, none of them can actually really flex pick from the three that we've seen so far. So supports are still in question. They could start things off with a support and then just hold off on that gold lane pick because I do feel that there's only so limited options at this stage. Oh. Cho is a very good support pick here. Yeah, great choice, right? Single target lockdown, way the dragon, finding the targets you want to. You're already relying on Nafs to pretty much be that front line for you. This is how the guy plays. So they are going to be working. Light is going to be working to find Skylar, to find um, Clay if he can. And they round this off. RQ is going to go ahead and take. There you go. There's Vin's Ruby. But now we've been seeing this hero pop up here throughout this tournament. Benedetta. Benedetta, I feel like is going to be really good here in this matchup particularly. And that is the carry pick from RSGPH. Now, wow, okay, let's talk a little bit about that carry pick because I personally don't like it here. There's not a lot of those beefy members on RRQ. I think beefy or not, it's still relevant damage, right? Yeah. Personally, I would have preferred a Moskov in this situation. Yes. I think that would have been a good way to go. 
But you have to give it. Uh, have to give it to RRQ. They really push them in a corner where it's just again. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what you pick. It's whatever is the flavor of the month for you guys. However, I'm excited to see Benedetta and cast the game of Benedetta on it. It's about <laughs> flashy plays. Let's see the bling go on through. And usually when we do see the Benedetta on the hands of Albert, he actually opts to go for a tank build. Fully tank here. So we might just see that happen again here as they do really need a frontliner. Ruby can't really frontline on her own. But ladies and gentlemen, once again, game number three as we open up the portal towards the land of dawn. RRQ needs to look for a victory here. If not, that's match point for RSG Philippines. Okay, so this is big, right? Albert on this jungle. Cushion, I mean, a lot of map pressure here especially when it comes down to Turtle, this is going to be such an important fight. And Aqua, he's not level 4 just hit. After the Siege minion, he should be able to hit that level 4 to actually participate. But Vin, if he can just slow this down somehow, I don't know how, but Light's already level 4. Yeah, RSG, definitely the first one onto this Electo oh. final blow, and he actually oh. chains it! Oh. The eye for an eye, oh my goodness, by Albert, as he finds the Retribution as well. What a performance, a play by Albert. I was just about to say, he's been uh, underperforming in game number one, game number two perhaps, but what? How? Yeah. That was nasty. Know? It's flashy, it's what you wanted, Gideon. What? This I, is Benedetta. It's so, I, I agree, it's really cool, but oh how did God. he know when to use the eye for it? How did he know, how did he predict that Light was going to try and intercept him there? Oh, well, there it is. That's gonna be Vin caught out by the way. The dragon here, RSG equalizing kills. I'm just still quite baffled uh -oh. there by the play in the turtle side. Uh, gone that play in early on. Now, RSG are gonna be ready for it next time around. Albert won't have an easy time of getting that eye for an eye. And look at this, Light already looking for something. Goes on for the Jeet Kune Do, on to Vin, and R70 gets bursted down. Forced to flicker out here as Nats tries to zone them away. Albert looking for the turtle, but it's still so full of HP. It's gonna be tough to just try to commit onto this, but that's the final blow once again. Albert oh. loses out in Retribution. Demon Kai wins in, and that's gonna be the real world inflation, locking all of them down. Vin falls as well. RSG Philippines with the pick. And they could be making a play here now. Oh, Light so on point with the way the dragon, but Skylar is still able to actually get that traded out by Albert. Still though, this gold lane matchup is going to favor Iman now that he has that kill on him. Yeah. So they start profiting off of these Ooh. picks. Wow, what a pick. Once again there, Vin reads it out, but Light goes in for the way. The dragon kicks Skylar back. No, he just doesn't even need it here. He no. goes for Vin, he takes one turret shot and will fall. Vin still able to survive right now. That's gonna be the Mystic Field and Electro Emon. Final Blow to come at it, to follow it through. And Mon just dishing out so much damage to zone these members away. But RRQ, they find a... Will benefit him, especially because he's running this weapon. Mastery here, Emon. Yeah, down below, Emon pops the wind of nature. Dawning Light coming through. Oh, oh. oh my goodness! Whoa, I thought that was going to be an outplay by Emon, but R7 again reads that flicker with a flicker of his own up top. Turtle going to spawn. RSG looking for it now, but RRQ as well. Light on the back side of it. He's looking for Skylar here in this engagement. He has the flicker. Goes in for the Shunpu and the Jeet Kune Do. Turtle taken down by Demon Kite. RSG still in the lead. Oh, what a breather. What a, oh, a breath of fresh air coming in from RRQ Hoshi as they find very sure that the rest are rotating out, but this stalemate is so important. Clay is going to bait things out. Oh, but Light gets so much room here. He goes oh. in the way. The Dragon King spin back, and that's going to be the Electro final blow in the Dawning Light. Demon kind against everybody here. He baits it out, as that's going to be the falling time connecting onto R7, immobilizing him, but RRQ are kiting back. Both teams losing. No, only. Light. Oh, Light with the Jeet Kune Do gets on the four, but RRQ. They were able to actually punish him for that with no follow-up from the other RSG members. Yeah, they got to respect you. I mean, walking away and RSG are thinking, yeah, they've used such key abilities. Let's go back in. And that's when Skylar, who's been waiting patiently in the brush this entire time, gets the initial punish. I don't blame Light for that move, and I don't blame Nats as well, but you have to admit, RSG need to start recognizing these patterns from RRQ Hoshi. They have to respect whether or not they're purposely throwing their abilities out to bait them, uh, to bait them and coax them into a fight. Yeah, but now we're taking a look at the bottom side river where RSGPH, they are actually able to take down that bottom side turret. And with that, they will have more control over this Lord. RSGPH with the gold lead still, this is going to be huge for them as they will look to commit onto more objectives. RRQ, it kind of feels like they're scrambling back and forth in the mid lane, just trying to grasp for pressure. As again, R7, whenever he tries to walk into the bush, Light's always there, Iman's always there to dish out the damage. R7 goes in for the commitment. Oh, that flicker was forced out of him. Uh -oh. Vin is 
looking for something here. He pops the oh! concealer. I'm offended. Flicker connects onto Iman and the collapse from RRQ. Skylar pick up his picks up a double kill here, and they're looking for more. Demon Kite still able to run away. Aqua dishing all the damage, poking Vin down, and Snap stays in that bush. RRQ will have the better time here on the Lord, but I feel like RSG they can definitely still turn this around. Oh, do they want to risk it for the biscuit? No, it's a 50-50. Here it comes, the coin flip. Oh, Dawning Light connecting, opening up the vision for RRQ. Albert going in, but real world manipulation, and that zones out so much. Skyler goes in for Wesker, and the retribution oh. falls to Demon Kite. What a retribution there, and they get out as well. Aqua almost finding R7, RSG winning the trade. They're fire. Luckily, it is still the first Lord of the game, so RRQ, even with that, they still can defend here up top. But RSGPH, again, it feels like the threat... I mean, if any, if the statistics show, that's a pretty deadly combo, right? The Xavier and that Beatrix, and Vin! Yeah, with the undefended, oh. pulls him back. Lights will fall. Dawning Light as well, just onto the mid lane to clear out the minions, helping them. Play the dragon, they pick up Vin here. They look for more. Uh -oh. Demon Kai dodging away from everything. Skylar in the midst of it all will fall. That's a shutdown. They're looking for more. Clay still able to kind of wait, but Aqua with the flags, the sprint to take him down. Albert now alone, left inside of his own base as Nats comes through and picks up a double kill inside of the base turret. RSG wipe RRQ out. This is huge. RSGPH consistently finding the kickbacks against RRQ and they should be able to guarantee at least one inhibitor turret here if they dedicate the damage to do so. Vince walking off two more seconds until R7. They're gonna respect it and leave the next wave to do the job stage of the game, but when he's in enlightened form, it's going to be significantly lower. So RSG are just waiting for these timings to get onto RRQ Hoshi as a response to how RRQ has been playing so far throughout this game. I mean, even with that being said, right, the, they don't want to commit to a Lord just yet because I really think they want to build off, you know, finding the picks here, whether that's light. Nance also providing lots of vision. Light's in trouble. Ooh, the dawning light almost gets him down, but R7 is there to pick up the scraps as Iman kites back. Finn looking for I'm offended, unable to connect it. RSG now looking for re as Iman just does so much damage onto R7. Nance with the falling star moon able to knock everyone in. Immobilized there as the real world manipulation oh. knocks them down. The dawning light connects onto three. Both teams will be able to back uh -oh. out. RRQ win, one for zero. Finn with the conceal tries to look for more. Albert with that electro final blow trying to cap close in to another RSG team fight into their jungle, but RRQ, they fall back, they look for the Lord. This is tough, right? They can't completely just take this Lord for free. So right now, RSG Philippines still wants to get a read on this Albert though. Pushing them back, Lord, less than half health. It's another 50-50. I don't know about this one, man. Demon Kai's looking for it. He's gonna get staying chained up. Clay picks up the kill onto the Lord. The dawning light comes through as Skyler gets the kill. It's the zone RSG away from the Lord. He goes in, cuts the wave oh. with the electro final blow, gets it, and that's a lot of distraction, a lot of time bought for RRQ to look for more. RRQ, they might just stop it here. The discipline coming through. RSG defends the base. Yeah, best way to do that, right? Just take the turrets the best you can. No mistakes are going to be made by RC Philippines just yet, but Vin could also, he's quite hes quite threatening, right? Has the flicker available. They do work on this last turret, R7, just around the corner too. So right now, they're holding on to that with dear life, but RC Philippines are able to defend for now. Look at Nats, he's body blocking so well to keep that turret alive. Yeah, he's refusing to let it go down, and I think, you know, Great has gotten caught up too many times from the side lane brush instead of pixel brush in the river. So they're just going to both their time here, just wait, let Demon Kite get into a good position. They're not going to jump on this, and Vin, he knows it. He's taking a stop. Oh. Light, light, light. Look at light, he goes in for the Kundo, going on to Clay, still able to run oh. away. That flicker oh. does not connect. He's going to get popped there. Immortality no longer available. Skylar picks the kill up. They're looking to re engage now. On towards RSG. Vin, look at Offend. It's not going to be able to connect. Aqua is huge. Oh! Flickers forward to cancel it through. He will lose out on his immortality. Albert comes in to cover for him. Nat still able to run away. R7 dashing in. Going to get bursted down by Iman. But both teams, they disengage. Meanwhile, up top, Dragon. minions coming in. It is going to be RSG who are forced to back away. Now with a two-man disadvantage with Aqua in that 
uh, base trying to defend. Oh it will God. be oh, RRQ oh, with the pressure no. here. Demon Kite still can look for a 50-50. Nash jumping with Boris Simon gets I am offended there, and that's gonna be the black line there from the side of Albert. He goes Ooh. in for the Electo final blow, and Mon gets chunked low. Albert looking for more. Demon Kite in the midst of it all, trying Albert, to go don't for the do execution, it. and that's gonna be him looking for it. The oh! retribution does not come through. It is the dawning light on to two. Demon Kite gonna get taken down. That's Nash as Come well, on. but Aqua he with the real on. world manipulation turns it around on his head. The play here from Aqua. What a dragged out fight. RRQ find the 50-50, but it was not enough. RSG has coin flipped so often, it's embedded in RRQ Oshi's mind. They turn this fight around and Mon saves the day. The mid lane and the gold lane. Either team, they're popping off for each other. We saw Emon and Aqua work so well. Let's take a look at the time, all right? I know that we've been saying this so many times. Light gets spin! No! The way the dragon brings him back! And that's a kill onto him. RSG once again on the crazy plays. Light, what was that reaction time, my guy? He saw Finn instantly went through with the way the dragon flicker. He's popped. He's yeah. so popped. He's making, uh, he's making Bowie here. That's Tagalog for he's making up for what happened earlier. Oh, Nath looking for more as well. Going for the Falling Star Moon. RRQ once again forced in their base. RSG, they ref They're coming back into this game. It's 18 to 16, but here we oh, go. Light. Lights once again jumps in. Oh, 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 what? The no combo combo as Aqua is there. Alpha jumping to the back line with the Electo final ball. We'll find Nas. That's going to be the render shot missing out. RSG somehow once again, even on top <laughs> of all of that, are still able to back off. Oh, so twitchy. It's really strong. R7 will struggle. Albert will struggle against them. He's really difficult to peel off. So RSGPH are taking the initiative to get on top of this Lord. So now RQ Hoshi has to respond to this because Nets, he is clearing up that top side. Oh. Albert, I don't think he's going to get picked up here. Not oh. just yet. Not with the eye for an eye, but... They know what's going on here, and RRQ have to make a macro decision. And Albert's the one who has to be forced to clear out the wave up top here. This is actually just so good for RSG. They they're can look for down. so many here, but RRQ, they're just doubling down. Like you said, they're going in for the mid lane. I'm in for the bottom side oh. river here, and that's going to be the Iron Fennec connecting. That's Nath jumping in for the Falling Star Moon. Dotting Light going to be able to connect onto everyone, but the Lord was taken out by RSG. Light of the Bush gets out. <laughs> Light, no! He's invisible. He's invisible. He's not a light. He's not a light. He's invisible. <laughs> and it worked. What an is I mean, a great play there. So compared to the first time where they met, where RRQ was showing the experience, but now RSG just playing rock, paper, scissors with them every single time they coin flip and get near to this Lord. But here it is. Lord's gonna be pushing in and RSG PH. Let's see how they play the situation out. Let's see. Lord in the mid lane will be cleared out by Skyler and Clay with the help of R7 as well. But RSG, they are able to take and punish RRQ for committing into that mid lane, putting all their resources there and they get the top side base turret. Looking for the bottom side now to strip down every single turret that from the side of RRQ. RSG, they push in now with the enhanced minions with Emon as well. Finn going in for a play onto the I'm offended, but now it's gonna be the real world manipulation locking them in place. Light looking for the picks, but will be zoned away. Dawning Light onto Aqua just takes out his shield as that's RSG with another victory in this game. They take that base turret down below. Now three base turrets down. This is like a similar situation here, but they go in one more time. Oh man, Nash jumping in for Boris Simon onto two members right now as Alfred jumps in with the play. No blow! Oh! Cancel! Light with the Jin No! He's able to save his team once again! And RSG! The damage in his passive is gonna help shred down this Lord relatively quick. Look at that true damage coming through. They're not even showing their jungler just yet, but Demon Kite, he's on top of it now. And Vin, he walks up. This is where it's gonna get real dicey because bot lane is gonna push naturally into the enemy's base as we see Esmeralda making a way to join in that fight. Oh, RSG Philippines once again looking for the damage. Albert gonna get caught there. Forced to use the eye for an eye as that's the Lord taken to a quarter of its health. They're gonna try to burst it down oh. here for RSG. Dawning Light opening up the map as Nats goes in for the Falling Star. going to spot out Clay. Albert, you know the damage. Real world manipulation to oh. stop them through. Demon Kite gets the retribution once again. And Light once more with the Jeet Kune Do. RRQ forced to back away, forced to kite away. And RSG knowing that they got the Lord, they do not want to overchase. The discipline coming through once again. 
Uh-huh. Once it was about quarter of the Lord's health. So now, here it is. An all or nothing coming in from RSGPH. If they get picked off here, it's going to be another three minutes that RRQ Hoshi buys for themselves. But at this point, at what cost? At what scaling? Fight or flight, Albert jumping in, trying to buy some time as he goes all the way to the back lines. They're light! Fight's gonna pick off Skyler, goes in for the viewer's passion, trying to clear the waves, and that's gonna be the final blow as well. All received, oh. they're walking! With the I am offended, brings everyone back into Whoa. place as Skyler dishes it out. He goes in for the flicker play, and Von comes in as well. Oh. He will be able to kill him down. Nas now still able to run away, and Mon taking low clay, trying to clear out the waves, and RRQ no. somehow defend for some time. It's only clay. It's two for it's two v one. There's nothing Clay can do. The ending is That's here. R S G match point. The King Slayers come to life once again in MPL PH season eight, season nine, and now M S C. Moment to moment here. This is breathtaking. R S G are winning out their 50-50s. They're getting under RRQ's heads, and it's a 3-0 against the King of Kings. You can change the draft, and still RSG Philippines answers here. What a game. I mean, again, this is almost a 30-minute game, just like the previous ones, and you can see the discipline coming out from RSG Philippines. Now they've made it to match point. Breathers all across the board, and I mean, just relief coming out from an RSG side member, but they need to finish out this one more game. The pressure is rising and the momentum is rocketing sky high for the Filipino fans and RSG First pick, and it hasn't worked out at all. They picked up the Xavier, a change of pace already for them, but now I think they need a bigger one. Go for the second pick. We've seen three games in a row that they have failed in that first pick. This is uncharacteristic of them, but still, RSG, they have been able to adapt. They are flexible and they have transformed formed into such a refined team here in the Grand Finals. Yeah, it's kind of uncanny. This is not even what I expected for <laughs> RSG versus RQ, right? And that's to be said, like, Mirgi, you make a good point here. They tried first picking, they tried second picking, they tried taking heroes that RSG Philippines used, and a lot of it, about, I mean, the previous game came down to that gold lane matchup, but also the mid lane combination, the synergy that they had with each other. We saw this on RSG Philippines, and RQ, they have moments, that's the thing. There are good moments for them, but for some reason, I don't know if it's just those really split decisions coming out from, for example, Demon Kite and Light, mm -hmm. if that's the decision maker here, because throughout every single game up to this point, RQ has done amazing things, but some for some reason, they just can't finish the game. They can't just punch it in here into the base, even when all turrets are down for RSG Philippines. There's something going on that, for them there. And for this game, number four, match point, mm -hmm. they've got to figure that out. They don't have much time left. Personally, they don't have any time left. Zero. I, that's true. But personally, what I believe is that RRQ are getting too much in their heads right now. After losing a couple of drafts, they're overthinking situations yes. when they don't need to be. Right now, they are playing rock, paper, scissors against RSG when it comes down to these Lord fights, even when it's 50-50 in the drafting phase, right? So right now, all they need to do, really double down on playing, go back to the basics, really focus down on getting some linear strategies so they can hit hard and make sure they move on to the next round. I agree, and uh, as the game progresses, game one, game two, game three, as the series progresses, you can already see the difference here uh, for RRQ, right? Every game, they get a little bit more hesitant to make plays, and RSG, they're just so good at punishing those slim, small little mistakes. We saw this against Omega. We actually saw this in the game-winning uh, match against RRQ as well in the upper bracket finals. When RSG were able to take RRQ down, it was after capitalizing on a lot of these mistakes, after yeah. punishing a lot of these mistakes from RRQ. And that's why RRG has just been so dominant here. They're so smart and they're so adaptive. Every single time an opening is there, yeah. they take it. They take it, right? Take and it. a lot of this is on the shoulders also of light, like I mentioned, yes. right? I said the term in Filipino, it's a Bowie. He was making Bowie for some of the things that happened early on. Mm -hmm. That just means he was making up for it, right? So at the same time here, this is light, his determination. He doesn't get rattled here. Although there are times where we see him make those kind of mistakes in terms of positioning on the heroes that he plays, he's still able, even if he has eight deaths, finding those key moments that really help give the team the advantage. Well, let's see what, what advantages they're going to be getting off of this draft phase. This is game number four, match point, coming in for RSG. Ooh. And once again, we are seeing them 
double down RRQ will win on blue side. Yes, three games in a row, now four games in a row. RSG oh Philippines God. now, again, just to remind everyone, match point. One more game to secure the victory in RRQ. They're still sticking with their comfort picks here. Game number three, same thing, same thing. It's the Xavier first pick. RSG Philippines have the exact same, well, bands, they can go for the exact same picks. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Yep. And there you go. They're actually going to lock in Esmeralda and picking. Demon Kite's Karina. Yeah. Works well. Yep. Works really well. Yeah. <laughs> Works a little too well, as a matter of fact. And I think RRQ, if, if they're going for this composition, if they're going for the same order again, something must change. So far, we haven't seen it just yet. And my guess is that specific Cho pick here, right? Yes. Because RRQ, the last problem that they had is the fact that Vin can only make play when Flicker is up. Yeah. Cho doesn't necessarily need that. He just needs a good position. He, he close the distance with the Jeet Kune Do and the Shimpo. So, let's see what it's going to be here. This time, it's going to be Lancelot coming in from Albert. It's an all or nothing here. It's all respect. I mean, it's all comfort for RRQ currently. Literally just comfort, right? Xavier on clay, signature pick and MPL ID. Lancelot on Albert and Skyler on the Beatrix. RSG Philippines though, they have the chance once more to pick up the Cho. And right now, up against a Lancelot, I would really like to see the Cho. The Cho just makes so much sense. And especially that we've seen how light just pops off, even with nine deaths, right? It's the right time. Yeah, Light shaking his head there. Oh. They're going to go ahead and lock in the Eve. So classic a matchup here so far from what we've seen from these games. Xavier versus Eve really just, I, I mean, at this point, right, it comes down to where they set up here. Because we saw the damage coming out from Xavier. And also, like you said, you know, this Lancelot pick. Lancelot versus the Karina. This sets it up better, hopefully, for, for Albert to actually go in those 50-50s, like you guys mentioned, where he can hopefully have the upper hand. Even if that means just getting those objectives, whether they be the turtle or the lord. Meanwhile, you know, when you have a Xavier and the Beatrix, it worked well for them. But again, they needed to win those objectives in the mid to late game here. And now going into the second banning phase, RC Philippines is going to take out the Masha here. They don't want to mess around with all that pressure. I think they need to ban the Lolita here, right? If you're RRQ, you already have that Xavier, that Beatrix as well. We saw it in game number three, banning out the Lolita. Now, do they just want to give two bans towards Light? You know, Lolita, maybe Cho as well, now yeah. that it's not picked up yet? I mean, I don't know where it's going to defer personally. And I think that at this stage of the game, RRQ just need to get rid of what they've seen before. But more importantly, make sure they don't forget about certain fundamentals. Yes. Again, simple combinations like Arena on top of having an Angela is really frustrating to deal with when you don't have an Esme, right? Diroth gets banned out for the side of RSGPH. So now this begs the question out of RRQ. What do we see in the EXP lane? We could see a Thomas again. We could see, oh, uh, sorry, not again, but Thabas this time to go into that matchup. There is the possibility that RRQ might just get rid of Cho this time, or maybe not. It's really difficult to say. I think if you if you want RRQ to, Mirko mentioned, right, this is very comfortable for them. So with this being match point, you want to just kind of fall back on those comfortable heroes and just pull your, your the way that you want to play the game, right? Which really starts here with that comfort. So the last ban is going to be the carry here. They don't want to deal with that. We saw what happens in yes. the previous game. They could, if they really want to, just have a safe XP lane number one against the Esmeralda. Famous does is possible, but also Uranus. Now, speaking of the XP lane and the gold lane now, after that carry ban, RSG, do they want to pick up a gold lane first, or do they, do they just want to leave it as a last pick here? Because Clint is still up for grabs. We know that Clint is just really, really good right now, especially against Beatrix in lane, especially the first three minutes of the game when you don't have that ultimate ready just yet. But I feel like right now, they already know the Beatrix is available. I mean, picked up from RRQ. Just leave the Clint for the last pick. Just pick up something here for the roamer. Lights on the Cho. I still believe yeah. Cho is the best option here. I think so too. I think Cho is a great option here in a matter of fact. But Kufra. Oh! Huh. Why double down on Kufra this time around? That's kind of interesting because Cho still has his single target lockdown. I guess they want to have more options in the way they want to play around this Yeev. I think it's kind of strange, especially since the previous composition worked perfectly fine. Maybe because you just want to use that bouncing ball for the Lancelot. That could be an option here. There it is. This is what we call, again, the eternal battle. Uranus versus Esmeralda. That's going to be a pretty boring lane for them alone. But as they transition to the game, it'll really depend on their positioning. And Mirko, like you said, there's the Clint. 
Yeah, I mean, at this point, right, look at the bands, look at the picks onto the gold laners. Clint was the only viable option here, so we see a whole lot of comfort from both of these teams, from RRQ and even for RSG. You see Esmeralda on the hands of Nats and Aqua getting the Yeeve once again. So this is all going to come down to execution. How do they play the game all the way from the early stage to that late stage if it ever does come to it once again in game number four could be the final game of the series. This is it. Crowd people, get ready. It's match point. RSGPH 3 0 against RRQ. Can they bring this back? Can RSG be crowned as the champions of C here at MSC 2022? Oh, there's one hard look there at the logos for the teams fighting it out here as we load up into the Land of Dawn. And man, I gotta say, both teams have very good drafts here. Again, it comes down to the execution factor, but here we go right through the portal. Welcome to game number four. Pushing on that pace, trying to pressure Albert in his own jungle. Top side dove in, going to get caught out once again. RS3 draws first blood. It's what you want to see. Notice that RQ are playing very antsy, right? You can tell that Skylar, he used that flicker. It wasn't necessary, but he oh. used Oh, there we go. Another pick falling into the hands of RSG. The momentum is on them, and one kill leads to another. Able to connect onto more as RSG. They just go for the turtle tape. Albert still here in front of it all, going in for the puncture to get the better positioning here. RSG look at line. He's chaining it in. He's going for it. He oh. will not find anyone there, but the Falling Simon will be able to connect. Oh. That's going to be line taken low, but the perfect timing to find Albert there. Clay gets the pick up onto line. R7 now in the midst of it all, trying to look for more as he jumps in with the consecration, forced to flicker out of that one. RRQ, they trade the turtle for a kill here and this is gonna be r7 actually caught out life finds it oh. goes in and will be able to combo him through that's gonna be the final execution by albert to look for something but cancelled away by the bouncing ball he no longer has the puncture he's gonna be rooted in the real albert. world manipulation that's the thorn rose pop but it will not help him escape and mon times the basic attack perfectly to find him at this point we're talking about 4k already seven minutes in they're just gonna gather up together and even put focus on r7 look at all of them go oh wow he actually is able to dodge away from that one but it does not matter rsg they put all the members up top rrq won't even be able to find a trade until right now that's a little too he can play a little aggressive and that's what we're seeing him do here and that's why it's oh, so difficult oh, light! he will be able to find it and rsg just go through the tunnel they punish rrq nasa a little bit too deep, will be punished oh. here as he will fall, but only a one for one. RSG, they pick up so many more. A little bit, take away a little bit of that magic resist, allow them to be weaker for Nats to run them down and find it. Light, he does try to initiate, but I think this Ooh. might fall. Oh, Nats, it's over. Albert has to recall. That's the Lord for free. Albert. In the mid lane, that read from RSG oh. was again beautiful. They catch him off guard and they have no chance at that Lord anymore. No, they don't. They try to go for an off angle here, but Iman, he's because Lancelot really, the Albert hasn't been able to do much here, right? Because the threat from Light alone, it's not even the fact that he's using the Tyrant's Rage. It's just sometimes he's Tyrant's Revenging and they get scared and they have to back off. Absolutely. There he is again, going for the Tyrant's Revenge in the bush. RR Kyohoshi back again in their own base with this enhanced Lord. I feel like RGPH can end. Yeah, they, I mean, the Lord pushing in the bottom lane. They're looking for the setup here. In a while, RRQ has to be able to defend against this. They don't have the best clear here. Now they do have Skylar and Clay, but it's going to get pressured in here. Base now cracked open. Bennett's going to be used there to clear out the Lord. R7 in the midst of it all, trying to just bait out some time. But again, RSG, look at how they're playing this, right? They go for one turret with the Lord. They know they can't do more, and the discipline is just insane. Once again, they move back, they go for more, and they freeze the lanes once again. Uh, this is another thing that they do really well. The suffocation of their opponents. Yeah. Yep, I mean, once again, RSG, they're making the smarter decision. There's no point to try and press the advantage here. They know they're on the winning end. A lot of these fights, they're 6.7K ahead, and RQ Hoshi, oh, oh, the pick! Light! 
Blades once again finds Finn. He will drop, but it's only his immortality. SRSG once again get Finn down. They will have the Pryo to control the map again. RSG Philippines, Light especially in this game, have been phenomenal. Yeah, finds that pick, right? This is again Light just making plays, and sometimes it's just the Tyrant's Revenge, right? So they find Vin here. Meanwhile, it's okay if you can think that because the Lord isn't up, but they are going to continue to put pressure on these lanes to try to get another turret because that's exactly where they want to set themselves up for as the next Lord comes up in less than a minute. Yep. I mean, honestly, this sucks. I mean, our, our, our SG is in full control. Our RQ, they keep trying to move out, right? But when you see these big plays come out from our SG side, and technically our RQ is punishing, all they get is just immortalities out of the flight. This could be it. This could be huge. Oh! Why? With the play to end the game, our seven is going to fall. And just like that, Clay, Skyler left to defend. 3 4 0 for RSG. They don't have the Lord now, but I'm pretty sure that they will have it now that it spawns in the 16 minute. Well, they might even not go for it here. I mean, it looks like they're not oh. Skylar. He's in trouble. And even the flicker no. came out of it. Nats finds him. And this could be it. The kingdom in ruins. A victor emerges from the debris. RSG. The Kingslayers have overthrown the King of Kings. The new Kings of Southeast Asia is RSG. The King Slayers adding a king to their list and becoming one themselves. What a series, a sweep. You know, this has been a beautiful moment. RSGPH are your MSC champions 2022. What a performance, the comeback, the victory, everything that they have done in this tournament has been phenomenal. From the lower brackets, scraping a victory against the past, the defending champions. My it, goodness, dude. The, the story, the story of them going from season eight from being the Demon Kite show to going to season nine and just really refining every single member there up to this point now and going to Lord Racket. Now making it back up here, it's so well, worked so good for RSG. And there you have it, RSG Philippines, your MSC 2022 champions. Fans of MLBB, wherever you are, sign in the chat, the comments, hashtag GGRSG. They have done it. Filipinas lang malakas. And thank you to RRQ Hoshi, our first runner-up of MSC 2022. Thank you so much. They have fought long and hard for this moment. RRQ Hoshi, please take the center stage. All of your fans are here. They're cheering for you. Araki Hoshi, please take center stage. Give a final bow to everyone here who supported Araki Hoshi. Please stand in front. Let's give the floor give a to Araki Hoshi. Let's all give Araki Hoshi a round of applause. We appreciate your hard work and determination. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Once again, RRQ Hoshi, everybody. And now, the new. Let's please welcome on stage, Mr. Lucas Mao, the managing director of Moonton Esports. He'll right be coming now. on stage to present the champion medals to our winners. Right now, looking at the faces of our champions, a lot of emotions are here on stage, Mara. And now, with Mr. Lucas Mao on stage, he will give the medals to all of the players of RSG Philippines. Congratulations for sure, Coach Panda. Head coach of RSG Philippines is celebrating all the way from the Philippines. Let's give it up 
Demon Kite. An amazing jungler. Lights. Nats. Aqua. Right now, Mara, I do want to ask the fans, who do you guys think is the MVP of the playoffs? Who do you guys think it's going to be? I hear a lot of Amine. I hear a lot of Aqua. Right now, we have the result. And we're ready. And the MVP of the MSC 2022 is... Eman! Eman, throughout the playoffs, has played amazingly, amazing position, managing to snipe everyone out of the battle. Congratulations, Eman. Take a look at this moment. Eman has done splendid. Eman, Eman, congratulations. Everyone, I hear light saying, ang galing, galing, deserve pare. I don't